Hello, I am Jeff Burke and I am going to be teaching a tutorial today starting with a real world application. Uh, instead of just doing little snippets of code and things like that, I was thinking I would uh, actually create a tutorial series that takes you all the way through the building of an actual real world application. So we're going to be using Visual Studio 2013 and the C Sharp language in order to create this and it's going to be a WPF application. But I think that you'll get a lot out of it. We're not only going to be working with those items because building an application is much more than just jumping in and writing code and, and doing that. You have to think about uh, the type of buttons you're going to use, the display. So we're going to talk about everything that really needs to happen in order to write an application. Our end result or what we're going to be working for is something like this. And this is in no way connected to the San Diego Zoo. Uh, this is purely a demonstration. This isn't a real software for the San Diego Zoo or anything like that. This is simply going to be providing uh, something that uh, we can use as a template, if you will, that uh, shows what really goes on. Because if you think about it, you know, when you're writing an application, you have to think about what is the background I want? What kind of title do I want? What is, do I want the user to see? How, how am I going to set up my buttons and what do I want those to do? What type of global variables uh, or global uh, settings do I want? Uh, you know, there's many, many questions that need to be answered before you really even think about starting to write a uh, application. So we're going to go through the whole process and, and uh, you, you know, you can make whatever pictures you want or backgrounds that you want, but we're going to talk about what it really takes to make a real world application as if there was a customer saying, I need you to do this for me. So in this case, our fictitious, although real named customer is the San Diego Zoo. And what they want is they want to have an educational software that allows a person to uh, navigate through the different aspects of the zoo. And in our case, we have buttons over here to the right which are uh, showing different categories of animals amphibians, anthropods, birds, mammals, reptiles, and we're also going to have a section where we can play games. Now on the bottom we have a couple global controls because what they're asking for also is that when somebody hovers over an area they want to have a text uh, uh, or vocabulary, if you will, item pop up with audio that is reading what's going on. So somebody that can just sit here can hover over. So you get that pop up box and you get the audio that uh, is associated with that pop up box. And each one that you do provides you information about that section and begins to play an audio file. However, if you want the narration to be off, you can turn that off and simply get the text files to be, or, or the uh, vocabulary, if you will, to be popping up. You can also turn that off. Now when you're working through the buttons, you get nothing. Uh, you can go either way. Now because this is going to take you to different windows which also have the ability to control this when we put it on here and then we close our window and go back to our main we want these settings to be able to follow so it, this is going to be talking back and forth with the windows and the main and we have to keep the session going as we go through also, when we go into a section and we actually click uh, or go over an item, let's say vocabulary on, now when we go over certain items, we also want to have the ability to uh, change what we're looking at. So, and when we come off those items, we want to be able to have it close. 
So as you can see, this is going to have a lot of control, a lot of interaction, and uh, that type of thing going on. And we're going to build this all the way through. And uh, you can use whatever pictures you want, or you don't even have to put backgrounds. But I think that by doing some type of background, even if you just do a, uh, a colored background with blocks so that you have areas that you can hover over and things like that. But on top of that, when you click, you're going to get a video that comes up. So that's the other thing that the customer wants, is the customer wants the video to come up when somebody clicks on one of the animals and talk about the animal. And of course, you're going to have to have control of that window so that you can bring it up or bring it down uh, to the full area and close. So you can see that this is uh, based on a real world type of thing that you could get from a customer saying, I need a software that does this. And they're going to talk about what that is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take a minute and write down all the things that we need to have incorporated into our software that we can use as a guide to know whether we're meeting the goals of the customer. With that said, let's kind of start with just a just a text pad or uh, I use notepad, but we're going to write down kind of our list or our description of uh, the goals in the software or the things that we're going to be looking for in the software to do and how we want it to act so that we can have a pretty good idea before we actually even start of what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to open up my text pad and you know what is it? Well the first thing is is that this is going to be Okay, so we have to keep in mind that this is going to be a software that's educational for the user. In some way, we need to make it flow for a user and provide them the information. But what are our, what are our requirements? Uh, we need a uh, sectional uh, control for the uh, different types of animals. Okay, uh, perhaps buttons. So that's going to be one thing. We need to gr group them into those type of things. Uh, we need to uh, have uh, a text display uh, describing the sections when the mouse hovers. That's another thing that we know that we want to have in here. So we're going to keep going on and I'm going to uh, just pause for a moment and I'm going to add this all in there and then we can uh, we can talk about it a little bit without having to watch me type in the screen. Okay, so let's look at our list that we have now anyway, and uh, realizing that we're always going to add on as we go. But as a basis, this is going to be a software that is educational for the user. Great, okay, it's a, it's a thing. We're going to have to have sections of the different animals, maybe buttons, maybe menus, maybe labels, however we want to decide to do it. Uh, we have to have some text that is describing the uh, the section. So the the customer wants to uh, that when somebody moves their mouse over a section like amphibians, there's going to be something that comes up, and they can read what an amphibian is. But for those people who can't read, so that you can target a younger person, they also want an audio file to start that is basically telling the uh, the t or reading the text that has popped up. So a vocabulary and an audio uh, at the same time. So with that, then also on the front, though, they want to have some intro video. So when they first open the application, it comes up and, and it has this nice page and a little uh, intro video runs. Uh, the diff they want to have a display of the video for each animal that could be clicked on throughout the overall uh, application. 
Uh, you want to have the ability to turn on and off the text and the audio files. Uh, the images of each animal uh, group, you know, there has to be the animals that you want. Uh, in this case we're going to put like eight animals in each section so that would be you got five sections that's 40 videos 40 texts 40 audio files uh, that type of thing you have to think about those because those have to be created at some point in time uh, we want to have a help window so that the user knows how to use the controls although they're pretty straightforward it's always good to have something that says hey if you click this this is what happens uh, you know just as an ex uh, explanation and of course we want to have an about window so that we can get our name as the software creator uh, out there and at the same time promoting our customer whatever the case may be uh, the the main window of course is the first thing that somebody sees so that we got to have some type of main window approved by the customer uh, and we're gonna have a animal game they want to have some games for kids to go play so we're gonna have to create a couple animal games or uh, in order for uh, a child to go in there and learn and we're gonna ha have to create those uh, uh, you know they, it's not something we're gonna go get and just stuff into our software so we're gonna have to create a couple interactive games maybe match games or something like that so basically this is going to be how we you know how we want it to go so uh, in very general terms we have kind of this outline that we can follow when we start creating our application and as a reference we know simply because it's already been created as a as a tutorial this is what I'm going to have as a final look, which looks pretty good, comes up, goes between the windows, can go back and forth between all the windows. It doesn't matter. Each one has its own background with the birds or, or that type of thing. So in the future, that's going to be what we're shooting for. But this is how you start. Simply by making a list of what you need and thinking about how you're going to put it together. If you don't know, if you're going to shoot from the hip, you know, you're just going to keep going back. You're going to start doing one thing, you're going to remember another thing, and you have really no path. You, you need to have a little bit of a map. Now, this is a very simple map, but the program, although it may have a lot of different windows and controls, there's going to be a lot of repetition. Whatever we do in one window, uh, so in our application, we probably won't make 20 different, you know, make five different windows. We may do two or three so that I can show you how things interact. But at the end of the day, it is going to be the fundamentals of starting from the beginning to the end of making an application for some customer that has a need that they want and the first step is this right here you have to sit down and vision in your mind how you have uh, you, how you want that to be based on what the customer told you so the customers told you this you've kind of created this list and we're going to use that as the basis guideline to go now as we go on and we start creating we might have something that we come up with but that doesn't mean we're going to immediately jump to it we'll add it to the list and we'll be able to uh, work on that uh, as part of our overall guide as we go so thanks for watching this first video on a real world application that we are going to build from beginning to end the first step being simply trying to come up with the outline and a basis for how we're going to create the application next we're going to talk about how to set up your visual studio uh, uh, environment so that it will meet some of this and one of those is, is we have to have the software install and run on several operating systems so until next time have a good day this is tutorial one of a real world application and I hope you'll be back for tutorial two thank you